The next item will be the discussion of prayer that uh, Ms. Miller uh, made the amendment to the agenda to add the discussion for prayer on there. Uh, Ms. Ms. Miller, if it's all right with you, I've asked our board of attorney, Ms. Um, Colin Chair, to join us this evening. And if you will, if you'll come up and uh, give us some information and, uh, and start our discussion. Thank you for having me this evening. I'm Colin Shai from Therrington Smith and Raleigh, an attorney for the school system. I know that uh, this is a very important issue for uh, members of the public uh, and the board, uh, and I will do um, the best that I can to clearly and simply lay out the legal issues uh, that are presented by prayer at school board meetings. However, I will acknowledge at the outset that this is a complex area of the law and one with uh, some unanswered questions. Uh, particularly in light of the town of Greece, uh, United States Supreme Court decision uh, that you've already heard um, <clears throat> some about this evening. And really the big unanswered question is to what extent does that town of Greece decision, which upheld uh, prayer at uh, a town, a town a board meeting uh, in the state of New York, to what extent does that uh, Supreme Court decision apply uh, to school boards and prayer at school boards, and to what extent does that decision allow uh, school boards leeway uh, to have some type of a prayer? Um, at this point, that decision from the Supreme Court came out in the spring of 2014, and since that time, there has not been a case from a court with jurisdiction over North Carolina um, saying whether or not it applies to school boards. So that's why at this point, it is an unanswered question. Um, there are a few uh, factors from the decision that I think provide a little bit of guidance as to whether or not it may apply to school boards, which we'll get into. I think there's also some guidance within that decision of if a school board were to choose to have prayer, <clears throat> what would be the best way to do so to stay in line with that decision and to have its uh, prayer upheld. Uh, I want to emphasize that what I'm going to provide is a general overview uh, of the legal principles that apply in the existing case law and that I'm not at this point giving uh, specific legal advice about any uh, proposals or practices, um, but just to help the board fac uh, facilitate its own discussion about this issue. Uh, and because I want to help uh, facilitate your discussion, uh, if during my presentation you have any questions or point of clarification, please feel free to, to stop me. So when we talk about prayer at school board meetings, uh, we're talking about from a constitutional perspective, the First Amendment and the Establishment Clause, uh, which provides that a state shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. Um, obviously, that in and of itself is not very instructive, and courts um, have spent uh, a long time grappling with exactly what that means and the, the barriers that that creates. And courts have recognized that it is a blurred, indistinct, and variable barrier. Uh, and the Supreme Court, even in the recent Town of Greece decision, uh, said that the inquiry remains a fact-specific one that considers both the setting in which the prayer arises and the audience to whom it is directed, which I think is a very uh, fancy way of saying it depends. Um, so it really does depend uh, on the factors involved. Uh, however, there are, there are some points from that case that I think can, uh, we can look to to decide um, when the analysis would be shifted one way or another. The general rule with regard to prayer involving schools is that government-sanctioned prayer in the public school or at school-sponsored activities is generally unconstitutional. There's a long line of Supreme Court cases that says that uh, prayer at uh, graduation ceremonies or prayer at football games, for instance, um, is constitutional and that government-sponsored spo uh, prayers, including non-sectarian invocations, are impermissible at school-sponsored gatherings. So that's the kind of the, the one line of cases um, established by Levy Weissman, which is a Supreme Court case. However, on the other hand, there is a, a separate line of cases, which I'll refer to as the legislative exception uh, cases, which uh, legislative prayer exception, uh, which says that uh, that it is acceptable for there to be a prayer at uh, legislative uh, meetings. Um, that was established by the Supreme Court in Marsh v. Chambers, a 1983 case. That uh, the case involved the Nebraska legislators' practice of opening each session with a non-sectarian non -sectarian, uh, prayer, and the Supreme Court, in upholding that practice, noted that uh, such prayers are deeply embedded in the history and tradition of the country, and they don't serve to advance one religion over another, 
and that the practice of the Nebraska legislature opening up uh, its meetings with a prayer was similar to the one employed by the first Congress, uh, the first uh, United States Congress in 1789, uh, with the chaplain delivering prayers at issue. Uh, um, and that, uh, uh, so the court found that because there's this long history of legislative prayers, because there's this uh, history of, of opening up um, uh, Congress and uh, meetings of uh, legislative bodies with prayer, it upheld that as constitutional. There was no um, decision as to whether or not that would apply to school boards. And there was no Fourth Circuit decision as to whether or not that would apply to school boards. Uh, since that decision came down in 1983, uh, the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals, which is the court, uh, the uh, federal appellate court that has jurisdiction over North Carolina, uh, had given guidance that said that uh, prayers at legislative meetings had to be non-sectarian. And so that was, that was the rule. Um, they could not be specific to, to one particular type of religion. Um, and, that was, uh, and, and that applied to all types of governing, governing boards. That is what has changed uh, in the wake of the Town of Greece case, the Supreme Court case, uh, from last spring. As in that case, uh, the Town of Greece had been inviting uh, members of the clergy in town to come and uh, open up uh, board meetings with a prayer. And those prayers were, uh, the vast majority of the time, they were uh, Christian prayer. And when it was challenged, the Supreme Court upheld that practice, even though that it, it, was, it was sectarian, uh, and found uh, and found that um, it really shifted the analysis from is it sectarian or not to is it coercive or not. And uh, the court in that case uh, said that in the general course, legislative bodies do not engage in impermissible coercion merely by exposing constituents to prayer they would rather not hear and in which they need not participate. So it's clear now that, that towns um, and counties can have that uh, type of sectarian prayer subject to some of the limits imposed by the town of Greece, which I'll speak on. However, that still leaves the question open of, does that apply to school boards? Because you'll note that the court said legislative bodies. It didn't say all other types of government-sponsored speech. It said legislative bodies. And again, that was rooted in the long history and tradition of prayer at legislative uh, meetings. But Mr. Collin. Yes, sir. Yes, that's fine. But don't school boards have the characteristics of legislative bodies? We are made up of elected officials, and by making policy that is applicable to 15,000 students and, and, and employees, is that not a characteristic of a legislative body? And that would be that would certainly be the argument for for saying that it should apply to school boards. Um, and again, there's not a court with jurisdiction over North Carolina that has said that is the case. There there has been one federal district court in Louisiana that that agreed with that uh, and said that. And quoting from that opinion, that because the function of the school, school board as the body governing public schools is more like a legislature than a public school classroom or event, uh, it is a deliberative body, therefore the legislative exception should apply. That's one case that said that, and there are, two, there are several other cases from federal appellate courts that said the opposite. Uh, and what they said was that a school board, unlike other public bodies, is an integral part of the school system, and it serves to make... Uh, uh, the meetings are conducted on school property by school officials and are attended by students who actively and regularly participate in the discussions of school-related matters. And because of those factors, because really of the, of the um, student attendance and participation, it, it likened it more to the school-related cases as opposed to the legislative exception cases. But, so, but you're saying none of those were Fourth Circuit, is that none accurate? None of those were Fourth Circuit. It was okay. a Sixth Circuit case, a Ninth Circuit case, and then the case that ruled uh, the other way that said that the legislative exception does apply was a district court case from Louisiana. Thank you. Um, so that's, that's where there's the ambiguity as, right. as to whether or not it would apply. Um, and that's really what it, what it does come down to. Um, so, um, but because there is that unanswered question, uh, if a board were to, uh, if a school board were to uh, adopt prayer at school board meetings, um, it is possible that it would be subject uh, to challenge in the litigation. Uh, there are several groups that have come out and said that they that they would uh, file a lawsuit challenging a, uh, a school board's prayer. Um, they've cited those the cases, the Sixth Circuit, Ninth Circuit case. Um, and, and they feel that that's what should apply. Uh, if there were to be such a lawsuit, the outcome of that is, I think, far from certain. It's not, it's not clear how it would come out because there is no, no precedent right now. Um, if, a, uh, if a school board did choose to 
uh, adopt uh, prayer at its meetings. Uh, we would advise that it stick to the uh, guidance from the town of Greece, which would, uh, and the several factors that the court uh, put out in that case in upholding the prayer, um, were that in that case the town of Greece did not attempt to control or edit the contents of the prayers, um, and that they did not find that it was a discriminatory practice or one that was un unduly coercive uh, to members of the public. Um, for example, uh, attendees should not be asked to bow their heads, uh, stand, or otherwise act uh, such the decision not to participate would be obvious uh, to other attendees. I'll also note that uh, since the town of Greece came, case came out, there has been a case in the Middle District of North Carolina, which is the federal court which has jurisdiction from Winston-Salem to Durham, uh, involving uh, the Rowan County Commissioners. You might have heard of that case. Uh, in that case, the, the Rowan County Commissioners started each one of their board meetings with a member of the County Commissioners actually leading uh, a prayer, and that was challenged uh, after the town of Greece decision came out. And even though that decision said that there, there can be sectarian prayer, the court in that case found that because it was a board member conducting the prayer and not an invited member of the clergy, that it was not in line with the town of Greece case, uh, and therefore uh, struck it down as unconstitutional. That case has been appealed to the Fourth Circuit, um, and that decision has not been rendered yet. And again, that would apply to county commissioners, which our legislative body, and so it still wouldn't provide guidance on the question of um, whether or not Town of Greece applies to school boards, but it would answer the question of um, whether or not uh, having a member of the body itself issue the prayer is a determinative factor. So uh, in conclusion, um, again, this unanswered question of whether or not that analysis applies to school boards, the safest uh, approach to avoid litigation would be to have a moment of silence and if a board were to choose to adopt uh, a prayer we would advise that the factors identified by the court in town of Greece be followed as closely as possible. Yes. Mr. Thurman, you've, you've concluded on that point? Yes. Yes. Well, um, I'd like to take some time to say some things from my perspective. I'd first like to thank everybody for being here tonight. Um, thank you for being here for so long and um, this turnout is a great illustration on why this is so important to so many members of our community and not only is Cleveland County watching, it's, it's obvious that a lot of people are watching. Um, there are people in this room who I'd like to speak to who have so many pure motives. Um, I heard some speeches tonight from some, some men and, and women who know the importance of prayer and the sanctity of prayer and what it means to each of us in this room. There's no question that it's important and I want to tell you that I appreciate the calls and the letters and your support um, and all that you've sent. Unfortunately, um, there are also some people in this room who have different motives. People who have somehow used prayer to gain a personal and political type clout. I, along with several members of the board, have to be honest, I've had my faith questioned. Um, I've even heard that as a board member, I'm not in favor of prayer. So all of those who ever questioned me, I learned as an ordained minister, one rule, I don't need to respond to such foolishness, so I won't. There have never been a board meeting where I didn't pray. I've always prayed. As a young man, my mama taught me that it wasn't about the eloquence in which I prayed. God could hear me even if I never opened my mouth. But there are some who think that not praying out loud for all the world to hear somehow makes your prayer less valuable. Why is it that people seem to think that praying louder and more eloquently makes you more of a Christian than someone else? Praying loud for everybody to hear no more makes you a Christian than walking inside of a garage makes you a car. But I will tell you as I read the scripture, Matthew 6 and 6, it says, don't pray as the hypocrites do. They love to pray in the street corners and in the synagogues for all the people to see. But when you pray, pray in secret. Close your door, and the Father who hears in secret will ward you openly. I know a God who can hear you in the war room. So sometimes it's not always necessary to pray openly. It's not about the way you pray. It's about the intent in which you pray. For anyone who would dare try to grab headlines and try to gain political power with prayer, I definitively say shame on you because God deserves any glory that comes along with prayer. Amen. Not man, 
but God, and God will share his glory with no man. My fellow board members, let us not ba make decisions based on political pressures. This crowd is beautiful. It's real nice. But we will have to live with the decision we make long after the cameras are gone, long after this crowd has dissipated. The question that I always ask myself is what's best for children? I've asked myself this countless times, and I think children need leaders who are not afraid to take a stand for what they believe in. When I look in the eyes of my nephews who are all in elementary school, I want them to know that their uncle took a stand for what he believed in. If we pass this, there will be opposition. Our attorney just stated that. If we don't, there will be opposition. There's going to be opposition one way or another. So tonight, I definitively like to say I choose to stand on the side of prayer. Although there are some who want to take prayer and manipulate it, I know the sanctity of prayer, and my intent will always be to pray, and I want to pray openly at board meetings. Some people will question our decision if we make it that way. Let them question. Opposition will come. Let it come. This is our moment to stand, and I have to say that I firmly believe that we have a moment in time here that we can take a stand and tell where we believe in. I will continue to pray even if it's not adopted because the power of prayer is this. As long as Christians are in the room, prayer can never be taken out of the room. So, but with that being said, I want to make it clear. It's important, and I do believe that we as a board ought to open our meetings with public prayer. I will second what Donnie Thurman has said, and I've been trying to get this pulled off for a couple years, and I'd like to see it come here tonight. First of all, I think it should have been cleared by the board members or talked to the board members before we called a lawyer. Talking about people spending money, that cost us money. Yes, he gave us the laws. I do not have a problem with that. But should that not have been discussed that we was going to have a lawyer to come up here? with the rest of the board members. I'm an elected official just like every one of y'all. And I think that should have been uh, okay by every one of us that we called a lawyer and hired a lawyer to come up here and present that because the public right here is telling us what they're wanting us to do. They want us to have prayer. Dr. Hammer. Mr. Chairman, uh, fellow board members, uh, <clears throat> as you all know, I'm retiring and I'm not running again. So I have the privilege of saying everything I think. I, I've listened to what you've said tonight, and I, I agree with some of it, some of it I disagree with. But I'm happy to hear your comments. I imagine there are more than 400 people here tonight. I don't know what our what our capacity is. What is it? Do you know? 250. So there probably were 150 who, for reasons of safety, were turned away. But I I don't have the luxury of listening to only one viewpoint. In my view, in my 25 years on the school board. I've tried to listen to all viewpoints. And then I've tried to make the decision that I think is appropriate. We have a policy on this board that was established back in 2004 with the establishment of the Cleveland County School System schools uh, that with policy development 
it would be evolved through a procedure which allowed for public input, and I don't mean necessarily in a group. Our current superintendent has been more than willing to talk with anybody virtually any time. Now that doesn't mean he or she, he, he is going to agree with what you say, but it doesn't go in one ear and out the other. It also doesn't mean that what one of us says, me included, is necessarily going to be what happens. <clears throat> there is wisdom in the board, there's wisdom in the process in which a policy change is evolved, comes to the board for adoption after all the factors that we can figure out are considered, and certainly tonight is a time that we should uh, take in, into consideration your viewpoint, the majority of your viewpoint, although there was one person who spoke uh, not in favor, I believe, if I if my notes uh, say that's correct. Uh, <clears throat> I, for one, do not believe that there's anybody, any member of this board, and I could stand corrected, who isn't in favor of prayer. Mr. Thurman, Pastor Thurman, has indicated and referred to Matthew 6.6, 6, I believe. I personally am much more comfortable with private prayer. He mentioned some of the reasons that might be misconstrued or construed correctly for public prayer. Uh, <clears throat> the process then goes through, as uh, Ms. Wampler pointed out tonight on another matter, the second reading. The first reading of any policy change comes approximately a month, maybe even six weeks, depending on the time of the next meeting before it's brought for a vote. I have never considered that jumping right at something is the best, except in my arguments in the past as a physician on the sidelines with referees, I did take the jump there. But I learned hard lessons too that way, Mr. Thurman. Uh, <clears throat> At any rate, uh, I am in favor of us further discussion. I would like to make a motion if it's appropriate, or do you think we ought to? It is. It is it, it's open. This, this, um, you can make a motion, and we can continue discussion after that if it, it is appropriate. I'd like to make the motion that we continue our tradition of opening our meetings with a moment of silence, but instruct Dr. Fisher and our legal counsel to provide us with the policy and guidelines to consider for possibly including prayer at our meetings. There is a motion on the floor. Ms. Mr. Pauls. Mr. Chairman. Um, Before I have any more discussion, uh, I'll need a, a, a second on that. I, I made a motion. I, can, can I have, go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, I, I just wanted to ask, is your motion, um, it's not saying that we would not possibly adopt open prayer at our meetings? No, You're it's not. not. Including that. You're not saying... No, I'm saying that we consider it. Could you, could you read the motion again, Dr. Hamrick? Okay. I move that we continue our tradition of opening our meetings with a moment of silence. No. But, no. But no. I, I, need, I need order in here. I need order. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. But instruct Dr. Fisher and our legal counsel to provide us with the policy and guidelines to consider for possibly including prayer at our meetings. I make a motion. I mean, I second that motion. And I would like to have, I have something to say. All right, I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Ms. Falls? Yes. Uh, 
I'm going to direct this at Colin. I get um, on Saturday. Uh, I received a call from um, a leader of a Buddhist temple. So, what is your opinion if we adopt this? Because it was on the news last week. If we adopt a policy, are we? Because there's so much um, talk of a Christian prayer, what is your opinion on that? And before you answer, let me say I am a Christian. Uh, we have to include all religion. What is your opinion on that? So it, it would. Are you asking? Do you have to? Okay. So if there there was a policy created that said that there will only be Christian prayer at the meeting. Um, and as explicitly what the policy said, I can say that's not what the Supreme Court upheld in the town of Greece. In that case, it was members of the clergy invited uh, to come and speak. And uh, the vast majority, I believe it was 90-something percent of the time, it was Christian clergy. However, the policy itself was non-discriminatory and didn't preclude other members uh, of the clergy or other people from other faiths from coming into the meeting. And the court found that that was a very important fact and upholding that is constitutional. Okay. And my, I guess my biggest issue with this uh, as a parent is we do, and you, you touched on this in your opening statement, we do at every board meeting, regardless as to what other people say, we have students uh, that come and lead, lead our pledge. And we have seniors at every meeting other than during the summer break. Uh, so I think that's important when we talk about having you know, open prayer because we do invite our students and that's what we're all about. Um, so that's kind of, is, is that what you're that, saying? And that would be, that would certainly be a factor that would be considered by the court, the, the presence of students at meetings. Okay. And um, what, what would you recommend to this board? <coughs> The purpose of the presentation was to help facilitate your discussion. I don't think that um, uh, it would be advisable for me to provide specific legal advice about a particular. Uh, about a particular proposal uh, in open session. If there were uh, proposals that were developed for consideration uh, that did raise legal concerns, I believe that we could address that uh, going forward once those proposals were made. Okay, so did I understand you that we, if you were going to advise, then we should do that as attorney to client privilege in a closed session? I believe it would be my role to advise on the legality of a proposed uh, option rather than making the proposals themselves. Okay. Mr. Harris. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a substitute motion, and I've got a copy of it. I'll wait until the copy goes around to all the board members. Mr. Chairman, I move that this Board of Education direct our attorney to create and present a policy to the Board to enable prayer during official meetings of the Board of Education. It is the de desire of this Board for our attorney to write a policy consistent with prayer at other municipal governmental bodies as well as state legislators. It is further the desire of this Board that our attorney present a draft policy on or before November the 9th, 2015 meeting of the Board of Education. All right, I have a motion on the floor. As a substitute motion. A substitute motion. I would second that. And Mr. Hooker would second that. Yeah. Any discussion? May I speak to the motion, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Mr. Chairman, I've struggled with this issue since our discussions last summer. The struggle was not with prayer. That was the easy part. I, like every member of this board, have been a Christian my whole life. And like several members of this board, I'm active in my local church. Of course, the school board needs prayer. So does the mayor and the city council. So does the sheriff's department. So does the president and the Congress. We all need prayer. And I'm not only a believing born again Christian, but I'm also a law abiding citizen. Good citizens obey the law. 
But as our attorney has told us tonight, the law about prayer at school board meetings is a gray area in my mind. And he posed the question, is saying a prayer at the beginning of a school board meeting more like a governmental official directing a group of citizens how to pray, which is unconstitutional, or is it more like a chaplain opening a session of the U.S. Congress with prayer, which is constitutional? I've thought about this a lot, and I've read a lot, and I've prayed about it a lot. I believe that if prayers at city councils are constitutional, and if prayer at county commissioners' meetings are constitutional, and prayer in legislative bodies in const are constitutional, then surely prayer at school board meetings are or should be constitutional. I'm an old retired history teacher. I know that the founding fathers who drafted that establishment clause expressed their support by, for prayer by voting to employ a legislative chaplain for the first Congress. James Madison and the other fathers said that was acceptable. It does not make sense to me that the first Congress in 1788 intended for the Constitution to forbid what they had just declared acceptable. All boards of education have characteristics of legislative bodies. That was the question I asked of our attorney. We are composed of elected officials. We make policy decisions that are broadly applicable to students and employees. The issue for me was never the value of prayer. Of course prayer works. The Bible speaks more about prayer, I think, than any other subject. The real question is, can a board of education have public prayer and still follow the law? I now believe that the answer to that question is absolutely yes. I urge adoption of the motion. Is there any other discussion? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to know what is the parliamentary procedure if uh, are you, when you vote for the substitute motion, that's against my motion. Is that correct? Colin, can you assist? I believe it would be a majority vote on the substitute motion to substitute for uh, Dr. Hamrick's motion and then and then would vote, although it would seem redundant, on the substitute motion itself. So we vote on the substitute motion first. Correct. And if it, if it carries, then we would not have to vote on Dr. Hamrick's? Is that what That's correct. Saying? Okay. I, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Ms. Fowler. Um, I think this is such an important issue. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we go into closed session to consult with attorney. Uh, uh, is that is that appropriate, Colin? That uh, Colin, that we can do that with these motions on the floor. The statute does allow would allow me to provide attorney client privilege advice in closed session if okay. the board chooses to do so. All right, there is a motion on the floor to go into the closed session to discuss with our attorney. Point of information, Mr. Chairman. Colin, the, the statute limits closed sessions to certain legal advice on buying property and things like this. Does this fall under the legislative guidelines? Advice. If this motion were adopted? Advice from the attorney uh, covered by the attorney-client privilege uh, does fall under the closed session statute. Thank you. There is a motion on the floor to go into closed session. Is there a second, Mr. Chairman? I do not have a second. I'll second. I have a second by Ms. Miller. I have one on readiness, Mr. Chair. What is the status of the substitute motion uh, if the motion to go into closed session precedes? I believe that uh, Ms. Fall's motion may actually at this point be out of order given that the other motions have not been, uh, been voted upon. So I cannot accept the motion for Ms. Falls because Until the other motions are on the table. Is that okay. That's correct. Okay. That's Thank, you. Thank you. I think right. the time is now. I feel like we just we just need to go on and answer what we need. I'll say that motion. Time is now. Is there any other? Is there any other discussion? Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Hall. I, like most of the members of this board, are Christian. I'm an evangelical Christian. 
saved when I was nine years old. I've tried to spend my life working with children and working at church. I'm an ordained deacon and have been for almost 20 years, Sunday school teacher for over 20 years. I too believe in the power of prayer. I believe that Christians should spend their time praying. And I try to do that in my life. And I encourage others to do the same. I am concerned about a couple things that will go along with this proposal. One of those is as an evangelical Christian, I do not like the thoughts of giving a platform and a podium to a non-Christian to speak to our children. And it appears from what I have heard, not only from our lawyer tonight, but from other things that I've read, that having a prayer will mean that we will have to open up the podium to people of all faiths. And I don't want to do that. And I'd like to just wonder from the audience how many of y'all can raise your hand and say you want to open up? In the audience. Please, please stay quiet. Okay. All right, I'd also, I'd also like to say that I'm also concerned because in the town of Greece, uh, from what I read about that uh, particular law case, they do not include, there are no children at a city council meeting or a legis state legislative meeting, typically. We do have children at our meetings. By my count tonight, we had five that led the pledge. We had uh, nine that, uh, seniors that came and spoke to us. We had three from the early college. I do not want us to put in a situation to where the only way we can have prayer and it be legal is to exclude our students from attending, from inviting them to the meeting, because that's what basically the Supreme Court has based their decision on school prayer uh, is about children being present uh, during the meeting. I'm also noted as being pretty much a tightwad, both personally and as a school board member. And I question how much money are we willing to spend to defend the decision to have prayer. Now, I'm not sure, but from what I, things I read, we very well may be speaking of a couple hundred thousand dollars if we go to court. That's enough money to give every teacher in this school system a pretty nice bonus. Do we want to spend that money on lawyers? Now, my question would be, if we do this thing properly, we may can avoid those questions and those lawsuits. So I am very concerned that we do it in a manner that it does not bring a lawsuit, that it does not exclude our students from coming to our meetings, and that it does not cause us to open up our platform to all non-Christian faiths to come and speak. So I'm, I would like to say that I am concerned about the method. I would like to see us look at that. I think we need to take time to carefully consider the wording of the uh, whatever policy we adopt, that we try to meet all those objectives and not just simply adopt something very quickly. So I do think we do need to take time and uh, study the matter, come up with a, a proposal that we think will be lawsuit proof, and uh, we need to make sure that we not just do this, but do it correctly. Thank you. Uh, we're not one nation under God. Uh, you're out of order. Please, audience, please be quiet while the board members speak. Mr. Harris. Mr. Chairman, I, Mr. Hall raises some legitimate issues, but my motion, my motion is, is on the concept. My motion would direct the attorney to write a policy and bring it to us within one month. At that point, when he, he or she brings that policy to us, then we get into the details of does it come at the beginning of the meeting or the end, and who does it, and that kind of thing. My motion is 
to not get into those details tonight because we don't write policy in one night. I understand that. But just that this board goes on record as directing our attorney to bring us a policy that will bring that about, that will bring prayer to our board meetings. And we'll, we'll work on the details next week. Well, Ms. Ferris, uh, help me understand, your substitute motion is not much different than Dr. Hamrick's motion. Is that correct? Did I misunderstand his motion? But my, my, my motion is to direct our attorney to do something. And, well, and it gives him a timeline as to when, when that's supposed to happen. There are a lot of similarities with Dr. Hamrick's motion. Right. But I think mine is a little bit more specific in what we're directing the attorney to do and when we're directing him to do it. Okay. Thank you. Yes. May I address uh, uh, Mr. Harris? I, I believe the timeline uh, is one of the differences. The other is to write a policy consistent with prayer at other municipal governmental bodies as well as state legislatures. We don't know that we've ever been categorized as a state legislature or other municipal government body. It hasn't been addressed directly, and, and that was the reason for mine being open-ended so that we could learn more about these issues. And I, I believe there have been a couple of more uh, suits brought uh, in other districts in May and March or so that I, I really can't comment on because I don't understand all the legalities of them. But And it's not important, but they're is evolving information all the time. Uh, those uh, cases were uh, in Jackson, Miss Michigan, and Pennsylvania, County, Virginia, or something like that. Uh, where uh, This was May 28, 2015. Uh, are you familiar with those, uh, Tom? I am. I do not believe there's been decisions inside of those cases at this point. Oh, no decision on them? I do not believe so. Are, are there any other school boards in North Carolina that pray for their maybe? Yes. There are. Um, I, I cannot say that uh, there are, that I have advised the school system after the town of Greece decision um, on implementing uh, on implementing prayer. Uh, but I know that there are school How systems. How many would you say out of the hundred counties? Um, it, it would be impossible for me to guess. Okay. I, I know of several. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Miller. I'm just going to briefly say that seldom are we asked to make easy decisions here on the board, and this is certainly probably one of the, the most difficult that we've been asked to, to make. If it were merely just a spiritual issue, that would be very easy for me and I think for the others up here, but there are other issues involved with it, but I'm neither a lawyer nor a constitutional scholar, and so I need to look to others for advice on this. I do, I am a Christian, baptized at the age of 10, and I've been a member of the church ever since. We have raised our daughters in a Christian home. They are both Christian. My husband and I met at church, and, and we continue to attend and be members. I found this very helpful to listen tonight. That's part of what I consider my responsibility as a board member, is to listen. I don't feel comfortable making a decision tonight whether we have prayer or not because I do think that there are many, many issues. And, and Mr. Thurman, I appreciate your comments at the beginning um, about the loudness, about whether we pray in silent or pray out loud. I think there is time and place for, for all of that. I do think that both of these motions that are on the, on the, the table are very similar. They are very, very similar. Um, and I think they both allow us the chance to 
get more information. They allow us the chance to study some of the issues and to, to make a to make a more informed decision because it is not an easy one to make. Uh, Mr. Hall, you, you are so right with at least the way I understand things at this point that that we may, if, if we adopt it, we may need to invite others of other faiths. I, right at this very second, I'm not 100% sure, but if, if we can adopt one of these motions tonight to guide us to the next step, I think that, that we will be serving the children and the people of Cleveland County much better. Is there any other discussion, uh, Mr. Thurman? I was going to say there is one distinctive difference um, between the biggest difference I see between Dr. Hamrick's motion and Mr. Harris's motion is with Mr. Harris's motion, we are in essence saying that we are going to pray. We want to figure out how we're going to implement it. Yeah, that's right. So I think that is the key. And, um, and I think, and I feel, I feel the need to say this, you know, I, I think that it's very important with our board that every, I want you to know just from my experience, I know these men and women up here on, on the rostrum. These are good people um, who I care about very deeply. This is a tough decision. I don't want anybody to think that's light. And, and, and the thing when it comes to our superintendent, he's a man of faith too. So everybody up here are people of faith. Um, but I think um, if, if we do, Mr. Hoyle made a great, um, you made a, a strong point earlier about a foolproof um, policy, a lawsuit proof policy. I don't think we'll ever find that. Um, so I think that at this moment, I, I'm just, I'm all for Mr. Harris's motion. Um, there are other school boards that do this. We're not reinventing the wheel here. Um, it is some, some territory that, that's tough, but when you take a stand, um, it's going to be some tough ground. Yeah. Yes, Dr. Hammer. saying that by adopting Mr. Harris's motion, we endorse prayer and we're going to move forward regardless of whatever policy? There is no question in my mind that we want to move forward with this. I know I do. You know, as far as this, what I read here, we're going to give the attorney uh, an action so, to create so, a policy. And so in effect, this motion of Mr. Harris's is an up or down vote for prayer tonight. That's what I see. That's what it says. I just wanted to clarify that to make sure. Yes, and, 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 Mr. and, and Mr. Chairman, and, and Dr. Hammer's question is a valid question. Mine is not to work out the details. Those will come later. But it is the intent of my motion that, yes, we set ourselves on that path. That, that is the intent of my motion. Is there any other discussion? I've been here kind of the referee up here and hadn't, hadn't got to say a whole lot, but calling on everybody. And uh, I would like the opportunity to say a few words. I'd like to start by saying that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. And I will never be ashamed to say it. I believe in prayer. I believe in the power of prayer. It is very important to me. I'm a type of person that I don't pray out loud very often. Not all that great of a vocal prayer person out, but I pray silently. And there's no doubt in my mind that my Lord hears that. He hears it regular. I pray often. I don't pray to this audience, and I don't pray to this board. I pray to my God. That's who I pray to. As a lot of you know, and I look across here and I, I see the audience, the majority of the people look familiar or I have a personal relationship that I actually know each and every one of you. And you understand that, you know, I spent 30 years of my life in law enforcement. And during that particular time, I uphold the law and the Constitution. I swore on that. Daily work for law enforcement officers, and there are several of them in here, your daily work is done because of the ruling of the high court. 
and you have to make some split decisions. And I appreciate that. I appreciate what you do out here. And it's a hard job. Now, a lot of the decisions that the high court have made for law enforcement officers, we don't agree with. I can give you plenty of examples that they have gave law enforcement officers and told them that the procedure and the way that you need to handle your everyday life and the way that you work out here on the road. I don't agree with it, and some of you don't agree with it, but you got to do it. If you don't do it, you're either going to get you're going to get sued, and you're going to get fired. I look at that a little bit of where I am as a board member. You know, and I understand people say you can't put a price on prayer. I agree with that, but you have elected these people up here to be on the board of education. And we got to think about that, not saying that that's the decision that we're going to go on, but it's got to be in the back of our head. If, if financing is not in the back of our head, then we don't need to be up here. There's a lot of hard decisions that we make, and we have to think about, if we do it, what is going to happen? Civilly, with lawsuits, what's it going to cost, what's the return? Those are things that we have to think about. So just to say, no, y'all don't need to think about it, that's, there's no cost on, on prayer, well, we've got to be conscious with that. We've got to be very careful with that. You know, budget times are tough, and, and we've got to make sure that we're spending every penny very tightly. You know, you know yes, our attorney came. I felt he delivered some good information for us to have. It is the board chair's decision to have the, the uh, board attorney to come here. I had, I had a pretty good idea that it would get on the agenda. I would not be a responsible chairman if I did not bring the board attorney here. That would be totally against where we stood if I didn't ask him to be here. So, you know, just to tell you, the people up here on this board are all Christians. They work their life. I shouldn't have to stand up here and tell you that. I shouldn't be able to, when I worked for my 30 years in law enforcement, I didn't have to tell that every day. I did it with my actions. I did it with my words and the manner that I conducted myself on a daily basis. That's how I sent it out. I personally don't feel like I have to broadcast it all the time. I hope my actions serve a lot of people well and they recognize when they see me that I am a Christian. I hope I go that direction. I don't get the choice when I was in law enforcement when I went to a call and service. I didn't get a choice to say I'm only going to serve Christians. I serve the people. Same thing with the Board of Education. I don't pick on different students that they are the only ones that I serve just because they're Christians. I serve them all because they are God's children. And it is my duty to make sure that they get a quality of education. Amen. All right. Is there any other discussion? There is a motion and a second on the floor of the substitute motion. Those in favor, say aye. aye. Oh, hold, hold on just a minute. I just want to clarify that this is to, the vote is to decide whether or not to substitute Mr. Harris's motion, Dr. Hammer's motion, is not <coughs> Mr. Harris's motion. Thank you. So we're just saying whether to substitute or not? Correct. Okay. I didn't my, my motion is, is like an amendment to, to it would Hammer's replace, and it would replace Dr. Hammer's. Would an amendment not have to be accepted by the motion maker? No, sir. Excuse me? I, I thought Mr. Harris said this was like an amendment to my motion. I, I thought the amendment to the replace. motion maker would be allowed to accept or would replace decline it. the amendment. An amendment, amendment can be made by a majority of the board to a motion. To replace. Okay. Please. But this was a substitute motion. Right. Okay. 
So the substitute would just to see if we allow it and then we would have to vote on it again. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. All right, I have a motion second for a substitute motion. Those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. No. Right. Division, Mr. Chair. Let's do show of hands. All right. Those in favor say aye. aye. All right, yeah. raise your right hand. We have four, Ms. Bridges. And those opposed, raise your right hand. Or one hand. That would be five. So the substitute motion would be denied. All right. So Dr. Cameron's motion is up. Is there any discussion on it? Would you restate the motion on the floor now, Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. I move that we continue our tradition of opening our meetings with a moment of silence, but instruct Dr. Fisher and our legal counsel to provide us with a policy and guidelines to consider for possibly including prayer at our meetings. Can I ask for, I, I did like the timeline in your motion. Would you consider putting a time, a similar timeline in your motion? Can we, can we do that? I, I, I don't see how we can do everything by November the 9th. Could we set a time? I, I think it is good. To have I, I think it's fine to set a time if we approve or if we have our usual policy thing with a, a first reading and a second reading. November the 9th is, is uh, less than, it's about three weeks off. So you're, but, could, so you're asking Ms. Miller if he could, if you could put November the 9th down for the uh, first reading of a policy and and discussion on that policy, is that what you're saying? Either the ninth or or just I think it is good to have a timeline for something like this. I think that that it shows that that we are serious about it and that and again I don't think your your motion. Your motion is certainly not saying we don't want to open with prayer at all. That's correct. It, it is not saying that, and but I think that having a timeline puts a little bit more, um, kind of puts the teeth in it just a little bit more to show that, that yes, we are serious about this, but we want to have some information. We want to have a policy that we can, can look at to, to decide if, if we if that's if that's the way we want to go, I would I would just feel a little more comfortable if there was a timeline in there. It can it can be the next. Mr. Chair, if that's a motion to amend, I would second Mrs. Miller's amendment. It's not a substitute. Motion. No, no, hers I'm is a motion to amend. A motion. Dr. Amber's Amber's motion. Is that a motion to yeah. amend? For November the 9th? If we think we can. I... Colin, do you have any input? That, no. I would be, that timeline would, would, would be Would feasible. be appropriate? Yes. Okay. And I just wanted to clarify whatever the motion to amend was, make sure we have it straight as to what the motion is. Okay. <clears throat> I'll second Mrs. Miller's amendment. All right. Mr. Blanton. Can I ask the attorney a question? Certainly can, yes, sir. And can we make the motion if we can vote on it tonight or not? You are certainly free to make whatever motion you feel is appropriate. All right, any other discussion? All right, we have a motion to amend the Dr. Hamrick's motion and we have a motion in second. Any other discussion? Those in favor? And we're voting on the Miller Amendment, right? That's correct. Right. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 
Mr. Were you a, a no? Yes. Ms. Bridges, I just want to make sure you get that correct. Were you a yes or a no? No. You, Mr. Blank was a no. I want to vote on it tonight. Okay. All right, we have a motion in this. We still, his motion has been amended to add November the 9th in it. That's correct. So, All right. So, point of information, if, if, if Dr. Hamrick's motion passes now, then we will continue a moment of silence until November the 9th, and by that time, the superintendent will bring us information for, for a policy. Am correct. I interpreting Dr. Hamrick's motion? That's well, correct. The motion specifically says, Guideline or policy and guidelines to consider for possibly including prayer in our meetings. See, this is not an up or down vote. But it's not excluding. It's not excluding. And it's not excluding. It's so. giving more time for logical consideration and hearing of other viewpoints that may be available or may come to us. In other words, it's using reason to do it. Well. I heard. A, I mean, I heard you say you're using reason. I think. I think I was using reason as well. Um, November the ninth is an appropriate timeline for him to get more information back to us. It would have been appropriate timeline for him to get more information back to us on how to implement it earlier. That's what we were talking about. So, I mean, so I just didn't want to. I mean, the only thing. Only thing I think we're doing now is just waiting to another date. To wait to another date, but. Um, that's it. That's just what I feel. And I mean, I no disrespect to anybody. That's just, that's just what I feel. And I appreciate that. Yes, Dr. Hammer. I appreciate that, Mr. Thurman. Thank you. I feel differently. I feel, in the terms of some others, that I'm being bullied into an immediate decision. <laughs> I expect the same reaction. All right, quiet. I, I All guess right. what I see that the Mr. Harris's motion to have a policy by November 9th, that would have been the first reading of a policy. But, and and I don't see much difference between that and, and adding that same day to Dr. Hamrick's motion. There's not much difference in the way of wording, there's just much difference in the way of adding. I mean um action. The action piece is that we're we're deciding whether or not we're going to start on that path as opposed to waiting to decide whether we're going to start on that path. So, I mean, that, and there's not much difference, but there is, a, there is a difference there. I mean, let's just keep it real. There, that is the difference. And I, I do respect what you're saying, and I respect the decision of the board, but um, I just disagree. You know, with all due respect, I respect you as well, Dr. Hamrick. I appreciate that, but I just, I just wish that we could start on that path tonight, but I know we're going to so I think where I see the difference is we've already received emails. Just because they're not a body here speaking does not mean that they don't have a voice as well. So it right. would give us time to gather some more information. I mean, just I since that. this meeting, I've received three emails. I've gotten many, too. So, I, I mean, I know that you all have received the same. So, it, I mean, I think that that gives the time frame for having a policy out there. We'll give input the same as the the policy that we just approved for Ms. Wampler's uh, decision is that w we had 30 days to hear from our employees that it was going to affect, and if not or whatever, then they have time to change that. So that's where I see the difference. I respect that. It's, that it's laid out, and the, the public can view it and come to us and give us input. And, and Mr. Thurman, I think we are start. We have started the process tonight. I don't see that waiting until November 9th. It's just the beginning of the process. The process started. Has well, started I, tonight. I appreciate it. I respect that. I respect that, Ms. Moore. I respect your interpretation. Yes, I Ms. think Bro the public has showed us what they want us to do. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any other? Can we have quiet in the boardroom, please? Mr. Harris. Mr. Chairman, naturally, I like my motion better, but <laughs> Dr. Hamricks does something. I, I like mine better, but Dr. Hamricks does something. If Dr. Hamricks' motion is defeated, 
board members, we're right back where we started from with nothing. I urge the adoption of Dr. Hamrick's motion because it does a lot of what I intended with my motion. I still like my motion better, of course, but his is not bad, and it's better than nothing at all. His, his motion gets the train going just like yours yes. does to go in that direction. Am I correct? Yes. Um, Mr. Hall. I agree with Mr. Harris. We need to take a motion. We need to make a motion tonight just to start on the process of developing a policy that answers some of those questions that we have about how this can how this can be done. There's a lot of discussion that needs to go into that to make sure that we do do a good policy. No policy is bulletproof, but some of them can be bullet resistant. I like that. And uh, I think most of the people that file the lawsuits look for the low-hanging fruit, the ones that are very easy to see violate the uh, Constitution. They're, that's the policies that they're going to try, the school boards are going to try to sue. If we make a policy that is a little more resistant, making sure that we've covered our bases, we should be in the clear. And that's why I think uh, uh, voting for Dr. Uh, Hammer's motion uh, is a good plan to get us moving on the path we need to take. Anyway, Mr. Cricker. <clears throat> Just uh, finally, uh, I did uh, like Mr. Harris' motion better. That's why I second it. But I'm also respectful of the bodies uh, making the motion to accept Dr. Hammett's, you know, version of that. And I think the only thing that uh, that concerns me is uh, I know there's a rush to get this done, but when we talk about policy, implementation of policies, procedures and processes, uh, it should be the same process that we do for all policies. You know, why should this dictate that a more immediate or impulsive response should be made when we typically will, and I'm a believer, you know, in timely deliberation, thoughtful consideration of any uh, action that we take. And this is simply what we're doing also, uh, as we have been consistent with other policy implementations. Thank so you, that's what I would say. Anyone else? Uh, we have a motion and a second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Aye. All right. Motion carries. That concludes our meeting. For this day, I, do I have a motion to adjourn? Could I, could I make another statement? No, sir. I've already closed uh, that agenda item. Well, Move to adjourn. It's not on that agenda. Move to adjourn. Have a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. second. Those in favor, say aye. Aye. Motion carries. <clears throat>